Well, hello, hello, welcome tonight. Our topic is correlation coefficient. I've got a very friendly topic for you tonight, and uh, you are going to need your calculator at some point, so why don't you pause it, grab that, and have a, a great time with these notes. So you probably don't need to copy this section in the white box down, but just stay with me. Data collected by scientists and others can oftentimes be fit with a line or a curve, but that fit is not always perfect. It is important for people who use linear models based on data to know how well the linear model predicts what is happening in the data set. The measure of this fit is known as the linear correlation, or the R value. So here's what we need you to copy down. The linear correlation coefficient is denoted by this R value, and you might have seen it on your calculator screen yesterday. Um, and second, it describes how well the data fits or correlates together. Exercise 1. Below are five scatter plots along with lines of best fit in R values. Based on the graph, we'll answer the following questions. So we do want you to pause it and copy these five graphs down. Um, you know, just as quick as you can, a quick axis, plot these points as nice and easy as you can. It doesn't need to be perfect and a nice line going through. Um, notice these are kind of scattered. Just do your best. You don't have to plot actual points. Just kind of get them on there. And like I said, pause it and I'll get those in your notebook, please. So you'll notice I have positive R values here, and I would say I have two positive R values, one R equals 1 and this one of R equals 8.9. What do you notice about these graphs? Can you even see what direction they're kind of moving in? I would say that the points are moving in an upward direction compared to this one where it's moving in a downward direction. Okay, so I would say the points are on the upward Let's talk about slope since we drew a line of best fit. Notice this line went through every single point. This line just went through as many as it could. Okay, I have some on this side, some on this side, but again, I just drew the best fit line in there. I would say, out of looking at those two lines, both those lines have what we would say positive slopes. Let's do the same thing for our negative R values. And I'll just circle again those in orange. This one had a negative R value and this one had a negative R value. What could I say about these lines or this scatter plot? I would say again the points are moving in a downward position if I follow them left to right of course. And how about describing that line? I would say that line has a negative slope. So let's jot two things down here. Our points are going downward and our line has a negative slope. Now, there is this last guy. Notice it's not positive or negative. Zero is not a positive number or a negative number. Zero is a very unique number. And notice, could I even draw a line? Basically, I couldn't. I had no idea if these points were going up, it wasn't very obvious, or if these points were going down. Here, I clearly knew they were moving upwards. Here, I clearly knew they were moving downwards. But in this case, I have no idea. And that's called a zero correlation, or no correlation. Okay, no correlation if I can't tell the direction that the points are going in. So let me give you this example. The amount of time I study in my grades, what type of correlation do you think they would have? Well, think about this. Uh, this is my x-axis, this is my y-axis. If I studied for, let's say this is in minutes, uh, maybe one minute, I would say my grade is probably going to be, if not a zero, pretty darn close to it. It would be pretty low. If I studied maybe for 30 minutes, I would say my grade would go up quite a bit. If I studied for 60 minutes, I think my grade would go up even higher. So I would say that this has a positive correlation. Okay, now it may not be perfect, it may not be a 1, but I would say my R value is pretty high, maybe like a 0.9. I can clearly see that it's moving in an upward direction, so I know my R value and my correlation is positive, um, but it may not be perfect. My next example might sound goofy, and I hope it does. Your eye color versus your zip code. Does it mean if you have blue eyes, you have to live in one zip code? I don't think so. I would say there's no correlation. And all that means is my points would be scattered. These two things don't relate to each other at all. And my R value would be pretty darn close to zero. 
Now, let me scroll back up. There's one other important thing I need to stress. Notice, the only time my points land directly on the line is if I have a perfect correlation, okay? 0.89 is pretty darn close to one, but that means the points are a little off the line. The only time they're gonna land directly on that line is if I was equal to one or negative one. And remember, the positive versus negative just tells me the direction or the slope of that line. So to sum up our D of correlation coefficient, here's what we need to know, and let's start this in our notebook. Our correlation coefficient has to be a number between negative one and one. And notice that equal sign. I can be negative one, and I can be positive one, but I can't go beyond that. So again, if I had a negative one, that is a perfect negative correlation. If I was close to negative one, maybe at negative 0.89, I would say that's strong because it's pretty close to negative one. Not exactly perfect, but it's strongly close to it. And it's still a negative number, so a negative correlation. If I said zero, remember I would say that there is no correlation, like our area code and um, eye color. If I had a 0.3, I would say that's pretty weak because that's close to zero but it's positive. It's a weak and positive correlation. And again, the closer I am to zero, the weaker I am. And let's add one more in there. If I said 0.99, I would say that's a very strong positive correlation because it's very close to one. So keep in mind that correlation has to fall between negative one and one. All right, so exercise two, which of the following R values would indicate a model, a linear model with the best predicted value? So remember, you are the strongest when you are close to negative one or positive one. And you're pretty darn weak when you're close to zero. So if I wanna have the best model, I wanna be the closest to either positive or negative one. Who can you eliminate? I would say 0.27 is pretty darn close to zero, so I'm gonna get rid of him. I've got a 0.8 and a 0.9 and a 0.6. I'm also going to get rid of that 0.6 because the other two are close to positive or negative 1. Now who's closer? I would say negative 0.94 is closest to either positive or negative 1. Exercise 3. Which of the following could be the value of the linear correlation for the following scatter plot? Alright, so if you had to draw a line, if you could draw a line through there, would you have a positive or a negative slope? I would say it's definitely positive, so I'm going to scratch anybody with a negative slope. Now the next thing I'm going to check is, well, since I could draw it, I can get rid of that zero as well. That means no correlation. Now the difference, remember, between 1 and 0.78 is 1 means it is absolutely perfect. Would you say that is a perfectly straight line and every dot is on it? Heck no. They're on both sides. So I would say it's positive and close to 1. I'm going to go with option 3. Exercise four, the points on the following scatter plot represent high temperatures outside in the depth of the snow in spring when it's melting. From the data, which of the following would be reasonable to assume? All right, so the best thing to do again is draw that line and if possible. Is it possible for you to draw in a line of best fit or are they too scattered? Well, I would say I could definitely see that these points are kind of on the downward edge. All right, so what's popping through my head is I'm saying that this slope is negative. And now I'm going to read my choices and see if anything describes that. The linear correlation is between 0 and 0.5. Well, does that give me a negative number if I'm between 0 and 0.5? I don't think so. The correlation is less than 0. If you're less than 0, are you a negative number? I would say that's true. Let me keep reading. The linear correlation is 0. Well, remember, 0 means you had no idea where to draw it. It's just scattered all over the place. So that's not true. And the linear correlation is greater than 0.5. Well, that's a positive number, and we just said we had a negative. So I think option two makes the most sense. Exercise five. Each of the following graphs shows a scatter plot of, a da of data. Which of the following graphs have a linear correlation closest to zero? Now remember, zero means no correlation. So I'm gonna draw the lines in if possible. I would definitely say in this first graph, I can see an upward trend. So I'm gonna draw an upward line, which means my R value is positive. And I'm gonna say maybe it's 0.9. I 
I would say most of the dots are close to that line. In two, if I drew a line in, I definitely have a negative R value. And I'm going to say maybe negative 0.7. And again, I'm just estimating. I wouldn't say they're all on the line, so I'm not going to go super close to negative 1. Um, but I know the trend is negative. Hmm, number three. I'm not sold on where I could draw that line. I'm not sure if it's going up, if it's going down. I don't really have a clue. So I would say that that one's pretty darn close to zero. And in number four, I can clearly see they're on that upward trend. Um, again, not perfect, maybe a positive 7.7, 7, um, but definitely going in the upward trend. So I would say the closest one to zero would be option three. Exercise six. A scientist found from the least squares regression line relating two variables was given by the equation y equals 8.72 minus 3.25x. From this equation, which of the following can we definitely conclude? So they want to know about our correlation, how it's related. Now notice they didn't give us a graph this time, so we have to use um, our knowledge of these lines to figure out what this line looks like. Now remember that equation back from Algebra 1 or Geometry, y equals mx plus b. All right, that number with the x, the coefficient of the x, is what we call that slope. And that slope's going to tell us which way or which direction our line is going. So as I look at this equation, remember that slope is the number in front of x, I'm just going to box it in, I know that I have a negative slope. So that hopefully is you know, a big indicator that your line is going downwards. And remember, this value here is my y-intercept. So I can kind of graph this line out. I know it's maybe up at 8.72, and it's going downward. So what does that tell me about my r value? Well, first of all, is it positive or negative? Hopefully that's very negative to you. And as I look at my choices, it's not 0. It's not bigger than 0. It's not between 0 and 0.5. That would be a positive number. It's less than 0. It's a negative number. All right, lastly, we want you to copy this step down. Here's how to turn it on on your calculator. So you're going to go to your calculator, and you're going to go to the catalog. You're going to have to hit second, zero, and you will see the catalog. So let's mark that in our notebook. Second button, and then zero takes you to the catalog. You're going to scroll down until you see diagnostics on. There's one that says on and one that says off. Once you see it, hit enter and hit enter twice until it says done on your calculator screen. All right, so for our last problem for the night, once you've got it turned on, it says state the correlation coefficient to the nearest hundredth. So this is what we practiced yesterday in class. Anytime you have a table, remember you're going to go to that stat edit, and you're going to enter your information in, in L1 and L2. All right, X's always come first, stick those in there, and then put your list in L2. Once you have that in there, you're going back to stat, edit, this is just what we did in class, oh, I'm sorry, stat, arrow over to calc, and choose number four, linear regression. Once you've chosen that, remember you always need to do L1, comma, L2 after that on your screen. Now, you should have these R values if you did not have them yesterday. And remember, our correlation coefficient is this R value that pops up. It said round to the nearest tenth, so notice there's a negative 0.98, I'm sorry, to the nearest hundredth. R equals negative 0.98. And what does that tell us about these two pieces of data? Well, it tells us that there is a very strong but negative correlation. And there you have it. Um, we look forward to seeing you in class tomorrow. Have a great night.